the video we're going to be checking out today is titled how i tracked down obama's former girlfriend and what she told me this is by biographer david garrow let's get to it let me um end off i want to go back to the heart of the book one thing that really is sort of coming back to the fore again is this the you know the fact that you interviewed uh Barack Obama's former girlfriend and and this and the specifics of of that sort of part of his origin story why was that so important and why do you think that still resonates right now and talk a bit about it I uh, forget uh, Sheila um Jagger Sheila I Yeager. I'm saying yeah Jagger okay Yeager. um that really seems to hit a chord with people and and tell us a little bit about what what happened there one of the most striking things about Dreams from My Father, Barack's memoir, is the utter absence of women from the book. I mean, not mm -hmm. just the three your girlfriends, uh, but his mother, too. Um, now, Who raised I mean, him. Any, <laughs> yes. Um, anyone doing a biography wants to identify and interview um, all the important people in, in your subject's life. Mm -hmm. um, Alex McNear, Barack's first serious girlfriend, Genevieve Cook, uh, his second in New York in the mid 80s, and then Sheila Yeager, uh, with whom he lived for three years or so in Chicago. Um, so I went and uh, spent a day or more with Alex, um, actually went to Australia where Genevieve lives to spend several days with Genevieve. Um, Sheila had never been named before. Um, and again, we talked earlier about how incurious the journalism was. Mm -hmm. um, it was public that Barack, you know, had a girlfriend with whom he lived in Chicago, who was a grad student. Um, and no one had ever made the effort to, you know, go look at the student directory uh, to see who else was living at the same address as Barack Obama. Uh, that's how I found Sheila, um, oh. my, my great uh, younger research assistant at, at Chicago. Uh, went to Regenstein Library and, you know, pulled these old, dusty student directories off the shelf. Um, we also found a very nice couple who lived right upstairs from them, uh, whom I talked to, too. Um, you know, anyone, uh, I think, is going to have, uh, you know, multiple relationships when they're, you know, age 20 to age 30. Uh, there's nothing particularly unusual or remarkable about that. Uh, Sheila's story is is so important, so powerful, um, because she's living with him while he's doing the community work on the far south side. Uh, that's the first time Barack has been in a majority black cultural setting, you know, mm -hmm. before Chicago. Um, you know, he grew up in Hawaii. Most of his college friends were international students. Um, when he's in New York, uh, similarly, he's he's not living in a, a black context whatsoever. He's working for a you know, financial services firm, um, and so Sheila was was present uh, during this very formative period when Barack embraces uh, his black identity, um, and also when Barack is having his first thoughts uh, about a political career in the future. Um, yeah. that's why he to go to Harvard Law School in, in 1988. And she gives a very different interpretation of some of the key facts from his 1995 book. Let's just make that oh, clear. Yes. yes. Um, the, 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 uh, uh, the you know, composite girlfriend who appears in, in Dreams from My Father is perhaps maybe a third Alex, a third Genevieve, a third Sheila. I mean, they're, they're very different people. Um, but um, you know, you don't uh, you don't get to meet the real Barack Obama uh, reading Dreams from My Father, um, as as I said back then, and it's a phrase that um, I can frankly say angered, still angers Barack. Uh, it's a work of historical fiction. Hmm. Well, let me just say, I want to just remind people why what it was that Sheila talks about that was so important because I, little bits and pieces are coming out even things like this letter that he wrote to her, <laughs> that letter her where he you know allegedly had thoughts about a gay relationship or wanting that that's now back in the press to your mind what is the heart of of why Sheila matters and why we should have been curious about her in terms of what uh, it says about 
Barack Obama? I mean, just just one small um, uh, timing point. Um, the, the, that letter in question is, is from November 1982. It's, it's to Alex yep. McNear. Um, oh, and, I'm and sorry. It's, Forgive it's, me. Yeah. No, and yeah. It, it's it's in the you know uh, archives at at Emory, at Emory University. Any anybody can go and read that letter. They mm. they won't let you take a, a picture of it, um, but anyone can can go and read that. That's you know public record. Um, no, Sheila, um, uh, you know, as I, I said just a moment ago, you know, Sheila was present, um, you know, when Barack is really adopting a, a black identity. And that mm -hmm. changes their relationship. Um, because she, she what is adopting a black identity? Like, what does it really mean, though, by that? It's a white, a white girlfriend, for those who did not know. Well, I mean, this I, I, I guess this her is a, mixed, a mixed, uh, mixed uh, race, I suppose. Yes. She's got Japanese heritage as well. Yes, yes. Um, she, you know, she she was uh, half Dutch, half Japanese. She does not identify as white. Um, and also, uh, she was Dutch. Uh, grandparents uh, were um, very much involved in protecting Jews during World War II. Um, and they're honored at Yad Vashem in, in Israel, um, the Heroes of the Holocaust uh, Memorial. Um, and one of the issues in, in Chicago politics at that time was black anti-Semitism. Um, mm -hmm. And again, this looms larger to David Samuels in our tablet interview than it does to me. Uh, tablet is, I think, focused yeah. towards the Jewish. Um, but Sheila was angry uh, that Barack did not share uh, the intensity of her feelings uh, about just how vile uh, black anti-Semitism was. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that interview it didn't give me like the thing I was looking for. Maybe I was looking for gossip. I was looking for um, smoke where there's no fire. <laughs> but it was a great interview still. Let me know what you think about that. I said anybody can go read the letter. I really want to read everything on that letter. I've seen some of the things that might have been on the letter, especially in relation to the same sex um, intimacy he had or he fantasized about. I've seen all the speculations on the internet too. I mean, at this point, are they still speculations? Because they say the letter is available. So it's possible it's not speculations anymore. But, well, somebody should ask Obama this in an interview. Why doesn't anybody ask him? Yeah, he's been on interviews a few times now, and nobody really says, Mr. President, did you write this thing? Somebody should have asked him. I would. Not to disrespect him, but, you know, just throw it in there. Well, let me know what you think about that. If you believe that about Obama, feel free to share in the comment section. And also, what do they mean by embracing his black side, starting to embrace his black side? I don't understand what that means. Because, uh, anyways. This is the end of this video. Smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Peace.